Hello, the purpose of this video is to introduce you to Lab 9 of Computer Science 340. Now this week we've been talking about recursion, and so in this lab you're going to be writing a couple of recursive methods. The first of these recursive methods is to do something that you would normally use a loop for in Java, which is to read in a positive number from the user. So if the user at first enters a negative number or zero, you should keep asking them over and over again until they put in a positive number, which you will then return back to main. The second of these methods is something that is actually better done with recursion, which is to compute powers. So if you wanted to compute something like three raised to the fourth power or two raised to the seventh power in Java, you could call upon the built-in math.pal method, I think it is, to do that for you. But now we're going to implement that method ourselves and see how that's done. This is one of those cases where the more natural solution that's with, done with a loop is actually not as efficient as the natural solution that would be done recursively. And so this is a good example of recursion. I'd like you to go through this. We'll talk about how this algorithm works and also about why it's more efficient than the loop-based one. So let's go ahead and dive into that. All right, so like I said, the goal of this lab is to get you writing recursive functions. And we'll be doing two things. The first one is sort of the more straightforward one, but that's also the one that's probably more likely to be done with a loop, which is to get a positive number from the user. You'll have to use recursion to keep looping over and over again to keep recursing, I should say, until they give you that positive number. You have to think about what is your base case and what is your recursive case and, and how do you put that together. The second method should be to compute powers. So you'll take two parameters in this method. One, which is the base of the thing, which is the number sort of on the bottom. And then the other is the exponent, the number that you're raising it to. And so to do that, you can use this recursive formula given here x raised to the y power is equal to x raised to the y divided by 2 times x raised to the y divided by 2 if y is even. Otherwise, if y is odd, you do x to the y over 2 times x to the y over 2 times an extra x. We'll go to the whiteboard and talk about why this works and why it's efficient in a second. But for now, you should know that you'll use this formula to write a recursive method to compute the powers. Then what you'll do is with these two methods, put them together in a program so that you get the base from the user and an exponent from the user verifying that they are both positive numbers, and then compute the power using your power method and print the answer to the screen. So for example, if you put in zero at first, it'll scold you <laughs> to put in a positive number, and then when you finally put in a positive number, it'll move on. Now this is asking for the second positive number, and we put in negative four, so it asks us to do it again, and then we put in positive four, and then it prints three raised to the four power, which is 81. So when you're done, like normal, put this in on Canvas. Now, I think the last piece of this that we need to explain is first of all, why this method here works, and also just as importantly, why it's very efficient. All right, so let's imagine that we have two raised to, let's say, the 10th power. Well, one way to compute this that you would probably naturally think of is using a loop to basically do two times two times two, et cetera, et cetera, 10 times and find the answer that way. But instead, this recursive solution is actually more efficient. What we're going to do is we're going to break it down into two subproblems. One is two to the fifth, and the other is two to the fifth as well. And so 2 to the 5th times 2 to the 5th is equal to 2 to the 10th. That's sort of like a uh, rule in mathematics that when you multiply like this, if they have the same base, you just add the exponents together. And then we're going to have to recursively then find what 2 to the 5th power is equal to. And this one has an odd exponent. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it equal to 2 squared times 2 squared times an extra 2 because that's what the recursive formula that's on the lab page says to do. When you do this division, you round down, which is nice because that's what happens in Java anyway. So now total, we have one, two, three, four, five twos being multiple, five twos total over here, which is, which is why it's two to the fifth. Then what we'll do is we'll drop this down again and we'll figure out what two to the two is equal to. And because this is even, it's just two to the one power times by two to the one power. And now you can use this as your base case because anything raised to the one power is just that number itself. So you can have that be one of the base cases in your method. And so now if you think about it, we the, the trick of why this is an efficient way of doing this 
is because we then, when we have figured out that two squared is equal to four here by doing this multiplication right here, we don't need to figure out what two squared is again because we already know that it's equal to four. So we can just say that this is four as well and then we can times uh, the four by the four by the two to get four times four is 16 and 16 times two is 32. So we get 32 as the answer here. So that goes back up here. Now we know that 32 is two to the fifth. And again, we don't have to compute two to the fifth again right away because we already know that it is equal to 32. And so we can just do 32 times by 32, which you might have to look this up, but I'm uh, thinking the answer is 1024. And this is our final answer. And now how many multiplications did we do? We had to do one, two, three, four multiplications to get this answer. If we did it the sort of more naive approach where you just times the twos together 10 times, then we would have had 10 multiplications. So in this scenario, this recursive method, using, you know, breaking it down as the formula on the lab page said is actually more efficient than sort of the more straightforward approach would be. So hopefully that makes sense. You should use this as the basis for your lab. Rather, you should use this formula here as the, as the basis for, for the method to compute the recursive numbers. Now, if you have any questions or are stuck on this, please just go ahead and let me know and I'll be happy to help. Thanks and take care.